My estranged sister tried to steal our family home after ignoring us for years. She showed up at my store and caused chaos. But the court case revealed a shocking truth about her life. I never thought I'd be sharing my family drama online, but I'm at my wit's end and need to vent. My older sister, Megan, 38F, has been out of touch with our family for over a decade, and now she's suddenly back, demanding her fair share of our parents' property. I, 34F, feel like I'm drowning in this mess, trying to protect what's left of our family while dealing with my own struggles. Megan and I grew up in a small town in Ohio. Our parents, Jack and Linda, weren't wealthy, but they worked hard to give us a good life. Dad was a high school teacher, and Mom ran a small flower shop. We were close as kids, but things started to change when Megan hit her teens. She became obsessed with the idea of getting out of our boring town and making it big in the city. When Megan left for college in Chicago 15 years ago, it felt like she was escaping prison. She barely kept in contact after that. Phone calls became less frequent, and visits home were rare. She'd always have an excuse. Too much schoolwork, internships, new friends. I remember Mom crying on Megan's birthday one year because she couldn't even get her on the phone. After college, Megan got a job at a marketing firm in Chicago. She met a guy named Eric, and within six months, they were engaged. We found out about the engagement through a Facebook post. When mom called to congratulate her, Megan talked for five minutes before saying she had to go. The wedding was a turning point. Megan invited us, but it felt like we were distant relatives, not her immediate family. Dad had to dip into his savings to buy plane tickets for him, mom, and me. When we got there, Megan barely spent any time with us. She was too busy showing off to her new in-laws and work friends. I overheard her telling someone that she came from a small town nobody's ever heard of, and how glad she was to have escaped. After the wedding, Megan's communication with us became even more sporadic. When she had her first child, a daughter named Zoe, we found out through another Facebook post. Mom was heartbroken. She'd always dreamed of being there for her first grandchild's birth. When mom called, crying with happiness, Megan seemed annoyed and said she was too tired to talk. Over the next few years, my parents tried everything to be part of Megan's life. They invited her and her family to visit countless times. There was always an excuse. Too busy with work, kids too young to travel. The drive from Chicago was too long. Mom and dad even offered to go visit them, but Megan always had a reason why it wasn't a good time. Meanwhile, I stayed close to home. After college, I became a teacher at the local elementary school. I met a guy named Brian and we got married when I was 25. Things were good for a while, but then I got pregnant at 29 and everything fell apart. Brian started staying out late, claiming he was working overtime. I found out later he was having an affair with a coworker. He left me when I was seven months pregnant, saying he wasn't ready to be a father. I was devastated, but my parents were my rock. They helped me through the pregnancy and were there for me when my son, Noah, was born. For the past five years, they've been my support system, helping with childcare and being the best grandparents to Noah. Last year, Dad started feeling unwell. He was tired all the time and losing weight. When he finally went to the doctor, we got the devastating news. Stage four pancreatic cancer. It had spread and the prognosis wasn't good. Mom was beside herself and I was trying to hold it together for everyone. We called Megan to tell her the news. She seemed shocked, but said she was too busy to come visit right away. She promised she'd come soon. Weeks turned into months, and she still hadn't visited. Dad kept asking for her, wanting to see his grandchildren. Mom called Megan multiple times, begging her to come. Megan always had an excuse. Work was too busy. The kids had school. Eric couldn't get time off. As Dad got weaker, he started putting his affairs in order. He asked me to help him run some errands, and that's when I found out about the hardware store. Apparently, Dad had bought it about five years ago when the previous owner, his old friend Bill, wanted to retire. It was Dad's retirement project, something to keep him busy. He'd been running it quietly, not making a big deal out of it. I started helping him with the books and learning about the business. It was a special time for us, and I treasure those memories now. Dad passed away three months ago. He went peacefully, with Mom and me by his side. Megan arrived the next day, full of tears and apologies for not making it in time. I was furious, but kept it together for Mom's sake. The funeral was a blur of grief and exhaustion. A week after the funeral, Dad's lawyer came to read the will. That's when everything exploded. The will stated that Mom gets the house, I get the hardware store, and Megan gets $50,000 from Dad's savings. Megan went ballistic. She started screaming about how unfair it was, how I must have manipulated Dad, and how she deserved an equal share of everything. Megan had no idea about the hardware store. When the lawyer mentioned it, she looked shocked, then angry. She accused me of hiding assets and turning Dad against her. I tried to explain that Dad bought the store after she'd stopped keeping in touch, that she would have known if she'd bothered to be part of our lives. But she wouldn't listen. Now, Megan is threatening to contest the will. She's been calling Mom nonstop, trying to guilt her into promising to leave her the house. She's shown up at my place twice, screaming at me in front of Noah. The second time, she was so out of control that I had to call the police to remove her. I'm so stressed out. Mom's health isn't great, and all this drama is making it worse. 
She's lost weight and isn't sleeping well. I'm trying to run the hardware store, take care of Noah, and protect mom from Megan's manipulations. Noah is confused and scared, asking why Aunt Megan is so angry all the time. I don't know what to do. Megan was never close to dad in his final years, never cared about his life, and now she thinks she deserves everything. How do I protect what dad wanted for us without tearing the family apart even more? How do I explain to Noah why his aunt, who he barely knows, is causing so much trouble? I feel like I'm drowning in responsibilities and guilt, even though I know I haven't done anything wrong. The hardest part is seeing how much this is hurting mom. She's caught in the middle, torn between her two daughters. I know she still loves Megan, despite everything, and it's killing her to see us fighting like this. I'm trying to shield her from the worst of it, but it's not easy. I've started documenting all of Megan's harassment, just in case. I'm considering a restraining order if things get worse, but the thought of taking legal action against my own sister makes me sick to my stomach. How did we get here? How did the sister I used to share secrets with, the one who taught me how to ride a bike and helped me with my homework, turn into this angry, greedy stranger? I miss dad so much. He would know how to handle this. He always knew how to calm Megan down, how to make peace between us when we fought as kids. But he's gone, and I'm left trying to protect his legacy and our family from the daughter he never stopped loving, even when she pushed him away. I'm not sure what the future holds, but I know I have to stay strong for mom, for Noah, and for myself. Dad believed in me enough to trust me with his business, and I won't let him down. I just wish I knew how to make Megan understand that this isn't about money or favoritism. It's about honoring dad's wishes and preserving the family he loved so much. Update one. It's been about a month since my last post, and I wish I could say things have gotten better, but the situation has only become more complicated. I appreciate all the support and advice I've received from this community. Your words have been a lifeline during this challenging time. Here's what's been happening. Megan has ramped up her efforts to get what she believes she deserves. She's now claiming that I isolated dad from her and poisoned him against her. This accusation cuts deep because it couldn't be further from the truth. I've spent hours going through old family photos and videos, remembering all the times dad tried to reach out to Megan. There are so many images of him looking sad as he hung up the phone after another failed attempt to connect with her. It breaks my heart all over again. Last week, Megan crossed a line that I never thought she would. She showed up at the hardware store during business hours. It was a busy Saturday morning and the store was full of weekend DIY enthusiasts. Megan burst in, her face red with anger, and started yelling at me in front of everyone. She accused me of stealing her inheritance, of manipulating dad, and of turning mom against her. Customers were staring, some even started filming with their phones. I tried to calm her down to get her to step outside, but she was like a woman possessed. When I asked her to leave, she knocked over a display of paint cans. It was like slow motion, watching the cans topple and burst open, splattering paint all over the floor and nearby customers. The mess was unbelievable, but worse was the look of fear on my customers' faces. I had no choice but to call the police. They came and escorted Megan out, but not before she'd scared away most of my customers and left me with a massive cleanup job. The incident at the store was the last straw. I filed for a restraining order against Megan. The hearing is next week, and I'm a bundle of nerves about it. I've been documenting everything, including the store incident, which was caught on our security cameras. The thought of having to legally bar my own sister from contacting me makes me feel sick, but I don't see any other option. I have to protect myself, Noah, and the business. Mom's health has taken a turn for the worse due to all this stress. Last week, she had a minor heart attack and had to be hospitalized. I got the call in the middle of the night and rushed to the hospital, terrified that I was going to lose her too. The doctors say she'll recover, but she needs rest and to avoid stress, something that seems impossible right now. While mom was in the hospital, Megan tried to visit her. I had instructed the nurses not to allow Megan in, fearing she'd upset mom and worsen her condition. When Megan was turned away, she caused a scene in the hospital lobby, yelling about how I was keeping her from our sick mother. Security had to escort her out. I feel terrible about having to do this, but I need to protect mom's health. The guilt is eating me up inside. But what choice do I have? I've been talking to the lawyer who handled dad's will. He reassured me that the will is solid and that Megan doesn't have grounds to contest it successfully. However, he warned me that she could still file a lawsuit, which would be costly and time-consuming to defend against. The thought of a protracted legal battle makes me feel exhausted before it even begins. The hardware store has been struggling since Megan's outburst. Some regular customers witnessed the incident, and in our small town, gossip spreads like wildfire. I've overheard whispers when I'm out grocery shopping or picking Noah up from school. Some people are sympathetic, but others seem to believe Megan's claims that I somehow cheated her out of her inheritance. I've been working extra hours trying to repair our reputation and reassure people that it's business as usual, but it's an uphill battle. Noah, my sweet boy, has been asking a lot of questions about why Aunt Megan is so angry. It breaks my heart to see him confused and scared. He had a nightmare the other night about the paint monster coming to our house. I've been trying to shield him from as much of this as possible, 
but it's getting harder. I'm worried about how all this stress and tension will affect him in the long run. In the midst of all this chaos, I discovered something that both warmed my heart and broke it all over again. While going through some of Dad's old papers, I found a stack of letters he had written to Megan over the years but never sent. They were full of love and longing, asking her to visit, to let him be part of his grandchildren's lives. In one particularly poignant letter, dated just a few months before he got sick, he wrote about how proud he was of her success, but how much he missed her laugh and her hugs. It made me realize how much her absence had hurt him, even though he rarely showed it to us. I'm feeling overwhelmed and exhausted. Running the store, taking care of Noah, visiting mom in the hospital, and dealing with Megan's constant attacks is taking its toll. I've started having trouble sleeping, plagued by vivid dreams where I'm running through the hardware store, trying to catch falling paint cans while Megan laughs in the background. I wake up feeling more tired than when I went to bed. Despite everything, I'm trying to stay strong. I keep reminding myself that dad worked hard for what he had, and I'm determined to honor his wishes. The hardware store isn't just a business. It's dad's legacy, his gift to me, and a piece of him that I can hold on to. I'm not going to let Megan's greed and anger take that away. I just hope that someday, Megan will realize the damage she's doing and stop this madness. I miss the sister I used to have, the one who would stay up late with me talking about our dreams for the future. But right now, that sister feels like a stranger, and I don't know if we'll ever get back to where we were. For now, all I can do is take it one day at a time and hope that eventually, this storm will pass. Update two. It's been two months since my last update, and I wish I had better news to share. The situation with Megan has escalated beyond what I ever imagined possible. Some days, I feel like I'm living in a bad dream, hoping to wake up and find that none of this ever happened. The restraining order hearing went in my favor. The judge granted a temporary order based on the evidence I provided, including the security footage from the store incident. Megan was ordered to stay away from me, Noah, the store, and our mom's house. I thought this might finally give us some peace, but I was wrong. Instead of calming down, the restraining order seemed to fuel Megan's anger. She started a smear campaign against me on social media, claiming that I had manipulated our parents for years and stolen her rightful inheritance. She posted old family photos, twisting innocent moments into evidence of my supposed manipulative behavior. One post showed a picture of dad helping me move into my first apartment after college. Megan captioned it, dad always favored her, now we know why. The worst part? Some people in our small town actually believed her. The hardware store has seen a significant drop in business. Longtime customers who I've known since I was a kid are now avoiding eye contact when I see them around town. I've had to let go of Jake, our part-time employee who's been with us since dad bought the store. He's a college student who uses this job to pay for his books and meals. Letting him go felt like I was failing dad all over again. Mom was released from the hospital, but she's still weak. The doctor said her heart attack was likely stress-induced and warned that she needs to avoid any further stress. I've been splitting my time between running the store, taking care of Noah, and checking in on mom. It's exhausting, but I don't have much choice. I hired a part-time caregiver to help mom during the day, but it's expensive. And with the store's reduced income, I'm worried about how long I can keep it up. Last week, I received a certified letter from Megan's lawyer. She's officially contesting the will. The letter claimed that dad wasn't of sound mind when he made the will and that I had unduly influenced him. It's ridiculous. Dad was sharp as a tack until the very end. But now we have to go to court to defend dad's wishes. I broke down crying when I read the letter, feeling like I was being forced to fight for my father's love even after he's gone. I've had to hire a lawyer to defend against Megan's claims. It's expensive, and I'm worried about how I'll manage the legal fees on top of everything else. I've started looking into selling some of my personal belongings. My car, some jewelry mom gave me for my 30th birthday. The thought of parting with these things hurts, but I'll do whatever it takes to protect what dad wanted for us. Noah's school called me in for a meeting last week. Apparently, he's been acting out in class and getting into fights with other kids. When I talked to him, he burst into tears and said he was scared that the bad lady, Megan, was going to take away our home. He asked me if we were going to have to live in the hardware store if Megan took our house. I felt like the worst mother in the world. I've been so focused on fighting Megan and keeping the business afloat that I didn't realize how much this was affecting Noah. I'm trying to spend more quality time with him now, but it's hard when there's so much to do. I found out through a mutual friend that Megan's marriage is on the rocks. Apparently, Eric is fed up with her obsession over the inheritance and has threatened to leave her. He's embarrassed by her social media campaign and worried about how it's affecting their kids. Part of me almost feels sorry for Megan, remembering how she used to talk about having the perfect family. But then I remember all the pain she's causing us, and that sympathy evaporates. The one bright spot in all of this is the support I've received from Dad's old friends. They've been coming to the store, buying things they probably don't need, and spreading the word about what a good man Dad was and how he'd be proud of me for carrying on his legacy. Mr. Johnson, Dad's fishing buddy, spent an hour in the store last week, telling me stories about their trips together. It made me feel close to Dad again, even if just for a little while. 
I'm trying to stay strong, but some days it feels like too much. I miss dad so much, and I wish he was here to help me through this. There are moments when I'm alone in the store, surrounded by the tools and supplies he used to love, and I can almost hear his voice telling me to hang in there. But then reality crashes back in, and I remember that I'm on my own in this fight. I know I have to keep going, for Noah, for mom, and for dad's memory, but I'm scared. Scared of losing the store. Scared of what this stress is doing to mom. Scared of how this will affect Noah in the long run. And underneath it all, there's a tiny part of me that's still scared of losing my sister forever, even though it feels like I already have. Update three. It's been six months since this nightmare began, and I finally have some positive news to share. The court case is over, and we won. The judge ruled that dad's will was valid and that there was no evidence of undue influence on my part. It feels like a weight has been lifted off my shoulders, but the aftermath of this ordeal is still affecting us all. The trial was grueling. Megan's lawyer tried to paint me as a manipulative daughter who took advantage of our elderly father. They even brought up my status as a single mother, implying that I was desperate for money and would do anything to secure my financial future. It was humiliating and infuriating to sit there and listen to them twist my love for dad into something ugly. But we had solid evidence on our side. Dad's doctor testified about his mental clarity, even during his illness. We also had years of financial records showing how I'd help dad with the store without taking any extra money for myself. The letters dad had written to Megan were also entered into evidence, showing his repeated attempts to connect with her over the years. The turning point came when Eric, Megan's husband, testified. To everyone's shock, he sided with us. He told the court about Megan's gambling problem, how she'd blown through their savings, and how she saw dad's death as a chance to solve her financial troubles. Megan's face when Eric testified. I'll never forget it. She looked betrayed and furious all at once. After the trial, Eric approached me. He apologized for everything and explained that he'd finally had enough of Megan's behavior. He's filing for divorce and wanted me to know that he never supported her actions. It was a surreal conversation, standing there in the courthouse hallway, talking to my brother-in-law about the implosion of his marriage. The hardware store is slowly recovering. Once the truth came out in court, many of our old customers started coming back. I've even been able to rehire Jake, the employee I had to let go. He was understanding about the whole situation and said he was glad to be back. It feels good to have a familiar face around the store again. Mom's health has improved now that the stress of the trial is over. Her doctor says her heart is getting stronger and she's been talking about maybe volunteering at the local library. I think it would be good for her to get out of the house and interact with people again. Noah is doing better too. His teacher says he's back to his old self at school, laughing and playing with his friends again. I've started bringing him to the store after school sometimes and he loves helping out by organizing the smaller items like nails and screws. It reminds me of when I used to do the same with dad and it makes me feel like I'm passing on a piece of dad to Noah. As for Megan, I haven't heard from her since the trial. Last I heard, she'd moved out of state. Part of me is sad about how things turned out, but mostly I'm relieved it's over. I hope she gets the help she needs to deal with her gambling problem and the issues that drove her away from our family in the first place. I'm finally starting to feel like I can breathe again. Running the store, being there for Noah, it's still a challenge, but it's one I'm up for. Every day I feel like I'm honoring dad's memory and that makes all the struggle worthwhile.